This is a joint session between PMA Consultants and Gilbain Building Company. Very excited to have Gilbain and Zach with us today. This is a company that hardly needs an introduction. 2020, Gilbain reached the top 10 for national contractors, according to ENR. Uh, they're one of our key customers um, and who have really partnered with us here on the development of our software. So we're very pleased to have them join us. Uh, Zach is going, who I'll introduce in a moment, is going to be talking about acceleration, uh, scenario analysis, how that's done at Gilbane, and I'll be doing a live demo um, with what we've been working on uh, software-wise for improving how that can be carried out. So we've got live demo, software demo, we've got a survey, it's going to be a really great interactive session. Uh, this is me. Sevi Ponce de Leon, it's pronounced. I lead the product management for our innovation software here at PMA Consultants. And uh, this is my co-presenter, Zach Witherspoon. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Zach, let him introduce himself, talk uh, about the agenda for today and kick off the presentation. All right, great. Thanks a lot, Sevi. Great to be here. So as Sevi said, my name is Zach Witherspoon. I'm based in Chicago with the Gilbane Building Company. I've got about 19 years of experience in the industry, and 17 of them have been with Gilbane. So I've been with Gilbane for the bulk of my career. Um, I lead our scheduling peer group. I'm a lead accredited professional as well. Went to school out in Boston at Wentworth Institute of Technology. And for the last seven or eight years or so, my focus has been around scheduling and developing our scheduling group with really a high passion around building high quality schedules from the start of the project, and then really diving into schedule management as the project progresses forward. So this is our agenda for today, and it's really exciting as Sevi said, we're gonna talk a little bit about the Gilbane and NetPoint relationship and how Gilbane currently uses NetPoint. And then we'll get into a little bit of a, a what if analysis and a scenario that we've put together just to demonstrate some of these concepts today. Um, as I go through that, we'll shift things over to a Project Summit, of which Sevi will take over and go through a, dem a demo on that uh, new exciting software, and just kind of demonstrate some of the, some of the key aspects of, of, of Summit and how it can help with scenarios and analyses and things like that. And then we'll look at a roadmap going forward and then take some Q&A at the end of the presentation. So next few slides, we're just gonna talk a little bit about Gilbane here. So just with Gilbane Building Company, this is just a, a quick snapshot of our company. And we won't spend too much time on this, just wanted to introduce it for those unfamiliar. And then feel free to you know, reach out to me afterwards with any questions or anything you'd like to go through further. I'm happy to, to do that and collaborate. Um, we've got 40 offices here in the, in the US um, on the map there. And then off to the right, you can see some international offices. So pretty spread out here now. Um, in our 155th year, 153rd year, um, founded back in 1870, We've got up over 3,000 employees now, um, $6.5 billion in annual revenue. And what's really, what we really find exciting is that 75% of our work is from our, our repeat clients. Off to the left, you can see those are the core values that we, we live and buy and die by every day here at Gilbane. So this is going to talk just a little, little bit about Gilbane and PMA. So um, we've really found a lot, of, a lot of success working with PMA over the last you know, 15 or 20 years or so. As you can see on the left-hand side, several different markets we've been, we've been focused on, but really 15 plus projects since 2004. We've collaborated with PMA in some form. With NetPoint specifically, we obtained our first NetPoint license back in 2009. We've got 12 licenses throughout the country and over 30 users currently right now with, with the NetPoint platform. So NetPoint at Gilbane. So this is, this is uh, just some more detail on how Gilbane specifically uses NetPoint. And like I said, back in 2004, we started using, we started collaborating with PMA. And then as we shifted through that decade, we really started getting into NetPoint and we found a lot of value with it. Um, the key point, a uh, couple different phases of the project where it comes in, the first being just in scheduled development. 
So in the early stages of the project where we may just have a project narrative or some concept documents, or even just some site plans or a general idea from the client, rather than go into P6 or another platform where we need to really pump in activities and put in a lot of logic, we'll work in net point and we'll produce a high level you know, level one schedule that just kind of builds, starts building the project in month long durations. And as the project progresses and we receive design information, we'll then go ahead and detail it further out. But we find in NetPoint through collaboration, even now in a quite a virtual world, it's very easy to share and show the graphical um, path methodology and how the activities link together the color coding of all the different activities. So in that first early stage of collaborative planning, we find it really helpful to sort of bind ourselves around the original plan. Um, as we move forward and we start to develop our critical path schedule, we don't really just let, kind of let the level one net point schedule go away. We continue to use it in developing certain portions of the schedule as the design develops. And then as subcontractors come on board, this is where we find a, a real lot of value in NetPoint because we can dive into details with the subcontractors and really detail things out and put those back into the master schedule. So a lot of those push and pull plans, we're, de we're developing the schedule further through some of those lean collaborative planning sessions with subcontractors and vendors. We found it to be really helpful in that case as well. The next few slides here are gonna talk about a what if analysis. And this is just going to be a demonstration purpose of how we take a portion of the schedule and bring it into NetPoint. And then what we do with it from there, if we need to look at a, a delay or an impact or a scenario. So in, in this case, we find NetPoint really helpful. While you can look at scenarios in other platforms and look at your former dates to your current dates and show bar to bar comparisons, we find it pretty visually appealing to do in NetPoint because you can just see on a top and bottom kind of copy and paste to your schedule what's happening to your original plan versus what the new plan may be showing. So we find that uh, it, it's really helpful to see that sort of graphical image and then be, being able to communicate that to the necessary stakeholders is where the, the image of NetPoint really helps us to, to build that case, as you'll see on the next slide here. So here, as you can see, the top portion of this schedule, this is kind of currently how we, we do a, a what if analysis in NetPoint. And this is really a basic, basic scenario. If you were part of the presentations yesterday, you would have seen a lot more linkages, a lot more overlaps and things like that. But for the purposes of just showing a simple delay, we wanted to do it in this case today. So above the black line, that's our original plan. So you can see from project start through procurement and then the six or so bars that make up construction to get to project completion. If we were to do a simple analysis in NetPoint today, we'd kind of, we'd go into NetPoint, we'd, we'd copy and paste our original plan and we'd send it to the bottom of the, 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 um, the screen just to look at the comparison of one to the other. So the green bars and the blue bars are exactly the same durations and logic in this scenario. And what we found is NetPoint is helpful for this, even if we're looking at the large, the whole project, but really pulling pieces of the project out. So if we had a, a steel delay on a project, we'd pull those pieces, we'd extract those from our master schedule and bring them into NetPoint and just take a snapshot in time. And then we'd start to work on that sequence of the schedule and show how a delay is impacting it and then move forward with planning. So in this case, between permitting and foundations, we inserted a 20 day permit delay. That's the orange activity right there. And we just kind of let everything slide out. And we just added an activity for project impact to show the 20 day difference from the initial project completion milestone to the new project completion milestone. And what we do in this case, if that permit delay was true and accurate, we would then go into a next step of collaborative planning where we say, okay, what do we need to do about this? Is this project impact going to be absorbed or is it going to be realized? So if the client accepts this impact and there's really nothing that they're requesting us to do about it, we'll sort of re-baseline the schedule and use the new project completion milestone. 
If not, if they wanted us to do some recovery efforts, we'd then take the foundations through the project complete milestone and we'd start, you know, breaking some links, adjusting durations, and really kind of pulling activities, overlapping some things that may have been finished to start and working on some of that logic uh, based scenarios and chain, making those changes to pull back that milestone as best we could. And what you'll see here, I'm gonna transition a little bit here um, over to SEVI as we go into Project Summit, um, because it's really exciting to show how we can, we can do this live in, in, a, in an upcoming platform. So I'll hand it over. Fantastic. <clears throat> Thank you, Zach. Um, so I would like to switch over to, to talk to you about Project Summit. Uh, what is it? How can it be used for what Zach's talking about? You know, a, a what if a scenario analysis in a collaborative fashion with stakeholders. Um, so Project Summit, uh, first and foremost, uh, this is a code name. Um, the application is still being developed. And right now, uh, this is a desktop application for Windows. Strengths are summarizing uh, and what if analysis. Um, and this is because you know, Project Summit is a little different from that point. Um, it combines the full detail of your P6 schedule, then with the simplicity of presentation that uh, you may be used to from the netpoint schedule. Uh, this combination makes it the perfect planning and scheduling tool for owners, upper management, um, contractors to, to be able to understand and participate together in the management of complex schedules all on the same platform. So right now, this application it's a, is a, available internally to PMA consultants, uh, but it is being tested with some select, select external customers as well. <clears throat> uh, also, there will be a, a pre-release available to everyone here uh, in attendance and, and at the conference by the end of this quarter. So I'll provide some more info about that as we, we move toward the end of the session. So I mentioned one of the strengths is summarizing. Uh, I talked about this a year ago uh, at the, the 2022 conference. Uh, you know, I presented on these different use cases. Um, when is it valuable to, to build a summary schedule uh, for different stakeholders, um, different levels? Um, and I went over some of the drawbacks when trying to do that in P6 or even in NetPoint. Uh, there's, there's cases where it's very time consuming and, and lots of workarounds. So our goal here with Project Summit is to really streamline how a schedule can be built all the way from the early planning phase and then maintained throughout project execution at multiple different levels of detail and all for different stakeholders, right? So let me tell you a little bit about how the summarizing works in Project Summit. Um, the way this works is you import the entire detailed schedule uh, and then build a summary that is right on top of all the detail and still connected to it all. Um, you can do this using the WBS or activity codes that might already be in the schedule, or you can do it you know, by hand right in Project Summit. But the most unique aspect about this is an algorithm that rolls up the dependencies at the same time that you saw it. Um, this has already been awarded to US patents. And you know this is different from really any other scheduling application that you may be familiar with. Um, and you'll see here as we move into the live demo um, why, but it, it really means that you know as you move through the, the project, progress updates, what if, uh, what if analysis can be carried out at any level of detail in the schedule. Um, and we're not we're no longer constrained to well this is an activity and this is a level of effort, um, and that can be instantly reflected up or down the entire the entire schedule, um, maintaining really complete vertical integration uh, like you've never seen before. So, in addition, uh, before we get to the demo, um, Project Summit leverages the graphical path method. Um, those of most folks, I'm sure, in the audience are familiar with the critical path method. Well. Uh, planners and schedulers and project managers here. Uh, well, you may know that this was introduced in the 1950s quite a, quite a while ago. So the graphical path method is very similar in the sense that it still calculates critical path, total floats, but there are really four key differentiators that I want to just spend a couple minutes uh, telling you about. The first, real-time logic. If you've seen that point, you, you, you know what this, this means. This means as you move the mouse, the schedule updates instantaneously. And a lot of other applications come close. Um, 
And what they do is when you let go of the mouse, they do a refresh. But if you've tried that point, you know, there's really nothing else like the true real time. And this is patented as part of the GPM algorithm. The next we call the plan dates um, or constraint free start dates. You can think of this as the ability to in a interact planning session, take an activity and just try out different scenarios, move it around. You don't have to put a constraint on it and take it off to hold it off its early date and, and really slow down the session. This lets it go really, really quickly and much more flexibly as you're, as you're going through a planning session. Um, the third, um, the third differentiator, uh, forensic critical paths. So think of this as really left of the day to day as the uh, execution projects being um, managed. Um, you still have total floats. You still have critical path left of the day to day, uh, without doing any workarounds or, or getting any, you know, going jumping through any hoops that you might have to in, in other tools. Uh, and this can really come in handy for you know forensic delay analysis. And last but not least, probabilistic total flow. So Guy and Vivek talked about this yesterday in the keynote. Uh, this, you know, it's you may not have realized, but it's it's thanks to GPM, thanks to the plan dates, which let uh, NetRisk model the use of float during a simulation, a quantitative risk simulation. Um, and you can see, um, is that risk going to affect the likelihood of completion? And you can see how many days can an activity be delayed before it reduces, right? Which we call safe float, uh, which, which uh, again, was covered extensively in the keynote yesterday. So um, that's our introduction here. Uh, we're gonna jump into a live software demo. And uh, as always, this is um, you know an internal development release hot off the press this week. I don't anticipate running into any issues, but sometimes things don't go as planned. So just a heads up, I'll go ahead and open up um, a live version here. The first thing I want to do is just import a large XCR file, uh, show you how Project Summit handles it, um, show you the type of performance um, that that it has. Then I'll move into a, a different file for the rest of the demonstration here. So I have an XCR file queued up. It's already been exported out of P6. I'll go ahead and import that in. Um, you can see it's working on the import. It's already done. It's got about 2,000 objects, which are activities and milestones. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And while I'm talking, it's going to lay out the entire schedule into swim lanes using the WBS. So a very handy uh, default layout. Um, and I can already start interacting. I can. Um, I could zoom out a little bit, bring in some more of the schedule. Uh, I can right click and just you know stretch it to fit the, the entire timeline in my window. Um, and now I can start scrolling down and start uncovering you know different activities in the schedule. I'll switch to the pan tool just to drag it around. Um, and even through the, the webinar, I think you can appreciate uh, the response, especially if you're coming from uh, maybe net point, you may not be used to interacting interacting with the schedule with over two thousand activities. Um, this quickly. Um, and this is thanks to really, we, we bring in just the, the data that's really necessary to show you the schedule, get you in it, start interacting, and then start saving that, uh, the rest of it to the database in the background. There's a database here underneath the hood uh, where all the projects and their data is going to be stored uh, in Project Summit. So uh, let's jump over to uh, another demo file, which I'm going to use um, for the rest of the session. It's, it's just really going to uh, show and illustrate our scenario here in, in a nice uh, a nice way for uh, for the demo. So we'll go ahead and bring this one in. Smaller schedule sample file. It's got about 50 activities. Um, so again, we lay it out by the WBS here. Um, and I'm going to start zooming out, try to bring the whole schedule uh, into the view. Again, I can right click and stretch it to fit. I like doing that and then start to start to see really the whole timeline, the whole project timeline right in the view. So I like this layout. Uh, this is something I'm going to come back to in the demo. So I'll come up to the toolbar at the top, um, and we'll go ahead and just save this as a new layout. This is really showing all our schedule details. So let's call it detail layout. Self-explanatory. So the first thing I want to show you is how the summarization works, um, not just in a PowerPoint, but here in the tool. So let's come to our first one, line, design WBS. Um, and we're going to collapse it. We're just going to minimize the swim lane. And you'll see that uh, we've got a mix of critical work, non-critical work, um, with different relationships that are going out to other swim lanes. As I do that, we'll collapse design. 
we'll see that uh, the activities are replaced by a summary. This is a summary that was not in the source file, right? Project Summit is creating this on the fly. Um, so you don't even necessarily have to have LOEs or hammocks, uh, WBS summaries set up ahead of time. And key is the logic is still maintained coming out of it, right? And this is uh, largely thanks to the embedded nodes as well. I mean, the embedded nodes allow us to visualize um, really the lags in those relationships when in our design work uh, are other, uh, other pieces of work coming out um, with respect to that, that activity. Also, you'll notice that we're showing criticality only where it's critical, right? So in the first half of design, uh, up until bit of word steel, we show it in red. But then after that, the rest of, if you notice, the rest of the work in our design lane is not critical. And we're able to show you that um, at the summary level. All this is really gonna help you as you see, uh, even as you summarize, trace the logic through the schedule, still see the flow of work and see the criticality. So there's a couple other tools here. Um, I mentioned you can sort of summarize by hand. So let's say we wanna sort of paint a different picture uh, for our audience. We wanna summarize it a different way. I can grab just the critical work here, right click and choose to summarize. And here we get just uh, uh, SD set and DB set summaries. I could come summarize the non-critical work and really any way you want to combine. Um, and you can start going through my, my swim lane and, and doing this by hand um, uh, you know, as you wish. Um, now, for a small schedule like this, this is nice, but for a bigger schedule, we need something a little bit more quicker. And for that, we're going to come over to the, the swim lanes. And I'm showing you by WBS. If there was any coding in here, you could choose to, to set it up by code. This particular schedule doesn't have any activity code. But what I want to do is roll up all my level one swim lanes at once. So we'll just choose level one. It's going to go ahead and, and introduce these summary activities with all the connecting logic um, as, I, as I click that option. So you can start to see um, maybe what you're familiar with in, a, in a, a Gantt chart application, right? We've got sort of one activity um, per swim lane. But I can go kind of one step further and, and get you what you're used to in NetPoint, um, where we've got, you know, no, no swim lanes necessarily and all the activities taking advantage of, of being on the same row. So we'll go one level higher up to level zero. <clears throat> and there we go. So I even have more than enough space on my screen. So I can even drag this, uh, drag this a little higher, my, my grid spacing, give it a little more breathing room. And um, you know, I like how this looks at this point too at a summary level. So we'll go ahead and save this and uh, we'll give it a very creative name like um, summary layout. So what's key here, right? Um, I mentioned the criticality shown at the, the summary level. It's also shown partial criticality. So we can start with design, see how it, it comes into, um, it's, you know, our notice to proceed, see how it comes into design uh, out to superstructure, um, then almost all the way through superstructure comes over to MEP before it comes back up into process equipment. I mean, we can see that plain as sight um, at the summary level because the logic lets us trace that with our eyes through the schedule. It's not just an all or nothing, um, you know, LOE that's showing up right or not, um, you know, very handy, uh, especially imagine if uh, you have a non-continuous critical path, maybe there's, maybe there's an error, maybe there's a missing link, maybe there's a constraint that's um, creating some criticality for us, um, which shouldn't be, you know, you'd be able to spot that right here. If this link wasn't here, you'd see very clearly, well, we've got design is critical and superstructure is, well, there's nothing connecting, right? So already you can start to spot <clears throat> errors at the summary level before you, you dive in. So I do want to dive in. Um, so let's go back to the, the detail layout that we saved earlier. And I'll show you at this level, we also have some tools available for us to, to, to trace that critical path. So we'll select the, the very beginning, the project start, uh, bring up the relationships table at the bottom, and we'll go ahead and fade everything that's not on the, this driving path. And we can do that here with our toolbar icon. And you see everything went gray and we can you know, choose what do we want to focus on? Well, if it's design, it's going to show us what's the driving path. If we want to look at buyout and award, it'll show us the driving path there. Um, but for me, I want to go through the, the critical path here. So um, in this case, I uh, kind of, I ran into a, an unintentional issue here. 
So we're going to go ahead and re-import to show you how I can walk through that critical path. All right. So I faded everything out, outside the critical path, and now we can use uh, the table down here to advance. So if we just, at the click of a button, click the right arrow, uh, we'll see it moves to SD set, DD set, bit of word steel, um, and so on and so forth. And the table shows us which of these successors is driving a knot. It shows us how much float do they have. So as we get here to steel joists and decking, you know, here we can see, well, there's two driving successors. One of them has got zero float. The other one has 11 days. We can even choose at this point, uh, uh, you know, which path do we want to go down? Well, let's select walls, windows, and doors. We can click our right arrow. You know, it, it takes us down this link over to walls, windows, and doors. We can see, well, here's the driving path, you know, going up to a, a milestone. So we can go back, go back using our left arrow. We want to continue going down the, the critical path here in the first row at the top of the table. And we'll continue to, to click right and move over. We can do this all the way to the end of the schedule and sort of get a, a look um, at the critical path. Um, you can start to see uh, maybe where the opportunities are along the critical path. Um, you know, tying this back to what Zach was talking about in the beginning, right? I mean, if, if process equipment milestone has, has been delayed, we know we need to recover some time here. And this is a good tool to walk through the critical path visually, right? Um, and, and, and look for opportunities um, and I, I want to, you know, call back Zach um, in, and have have him talk about maybe what are some different strategies that you you, you do um, on your projects. Um, something we could try out here um, to try to accelerate work um, and bring back the, the milestone. What do you think, Zach? Yeah, thanks, Sevi. So, you know, a lot of times th this is what we do a lot of times day in and day out out on out on our sites uh, where we'll we'll pull in net point and we'll pull pieces of the project schedule and try to come up with different different ways to pull back a schedule if we needed to recover some time. A lot of times, unfortunately, the default is to go to adding resources or putting on extra hours or shift work. And we, while at times we'll do that, if we need to add in a Saturday or shift an eight hour day to a 10 hour day um, or add in workforce to accommodate some of those advances in the schedule, but really we try to keep that as, as sort of the last case um, because adding workforce and adding hours to the day and days to the week can often come with project fatigue and some safety issues. So the first really place we go is to the schedule itself. And we try to look for areas that maybe are finished to start that we wanna to try to overlap, um, resequence some activities. Maybe there's an available space on site where we could go and and work that we was near critical path and we want to hold that from becoming critical but really we look at our critical path and then we say okay what what can we do here safely what logic can we break and what logic can we overlap um, that the trades will be accepting to so that we're not causing too much strain on the on the project site so that's what we're going to look at next here that Sebi's going to show you excellent those are all all good, uh, good ideas um so um, what I want to do is set up a baseline here. So we'll have a, a basis for comparison. Um, so before we start changing the schedule, we'll come up to the toolbar again, into the scenarios. We'll go ahead and click new. And we're just going to save a new target. This is like a baseline. We'll go ahead and call it baseline. Uh, again, we'll have that basis of comparison. <clears throat> and now uh, what we want to do is just create a copy of the entire schedule, right? We, we want to make changes, but we're not sure if those changes we're gonna we're gonna accept, we're not sure what the outcome is gonna be yet. So rather than than you know mess with our our official schedule here, we'll come create a new scenario again. This time it'll be a what if analysis. Um, you know we can try some resequencing as well and <clears throat> call this resequencing scenario. I'm extremely original today with my my names. <clears throat> and, and now we can start to look at the critical path. We just traced through it. We maybe found some areas of opportunity. I want to show you also a search feature we have. Um, you know, maybe we, we spotted something along the way, and uh, it's a larger schedule. We want to jump right back there, so we can come up to the upper right corner, um, type in, let's say, SOG4 and sealed decks, which may be an activity we're looking for. 
um, and go ahead and click it. And Project Summit is going to you know scroll the whole canvas to show us right where it is. So really handy for for navigating around the big schedule. So what I'd like to do is, you know, here we have a finish to start uh, tie between uh, these two different areas of work, superstructure, MEP. So let's try, you know, try something out. This is a good, uh, good opportunity. We'll go ahead and right click on the link. I will change it from finish to start to start to start. So you'll see Project Summit when I do this, um, it's going to automatically put a new embedded node in there on the predecessor for, uh, for you. Uh, Retie um, to the successor and you see the, the critical path changed already, right? Because so far, power lighting, low voltage, it's just left out of plan date. So what was the critical path is now near critical. Um, and now, um, you know, if we, if we look, we've got seven days of flow. I can see piping HVAC. If I, if I tra trace it down over to MEP, this is where that, that float's coming in. And then MEP goes up to install, connect, uh, process equipment. So I want to bring back process equipment complete milestone, right? That was my goal. So just by changing the logic, it's gonna let me move some work in parallel um, so we can grab power lighting low voltage. And now we can, like I mentioned on the PowerPoint, use that GPM real-time logic. We can drag power lighting low voltage. And as I'm moving my mouse, uh, you'll see MEP gets pulled back, <clears throat> install connect process equipment's pulled back. The new critical path is shown in red. It's all happening in real time. I can leave power lighting and low voltage, you know, here on a planned date. Maybe um, I don't need to bring it all the way back to the early date. This is that, you know, constraint-free planned date ability that I talked about. Um, maybe for resource optimization, I'm, I want to leave it there. And I can try these different scenarios out, um, you know, very freely during a planning session. If I didn't like it, I can come up and do an undo. I can, you know, move power lighting um, low voltage around. And really, you know, try to, to arrive at what the, the best scenario is. This one, for the sake of our, our demo, is going to be just fine. Uh, we brought process equipment complete back a couple of days. So, you know, I want to take this now, and maybe we did this with some, some different project team members, but I want to spit this out for, for other stakeholders, right? So, Zach talked about, you know, how can we just extract out a piece of work for our what-if analysis? Um, so, here in Project Summit, we can do that with filters. So I'll bring up the table again, switch over to filters. We'll go ahead and create a new filter. Uh, we'll just bring in all the activities and milestones. Uh, in this case, uh, I want to just narrow in on different areas of the WBS where we did our analysis. So let's take a look at um, superstructure, right? That's where the predecessor was. And you'll see the canvas is refreshing in real time. So I can see already, if, is this the right filter that I want to build? You know, no windows are popping up and I have to hit a bunch of buttons or anything. So let's combine a few more, uh, a few more criteria. Uh, I want also my WBS equals to the MEP. All right, that's starting to look good. Um, but I know the new critical path was down there, and I think it was uh, process equipment. So let's choose process equipment. All right. So you know we've just compressed the whole schedule. Um, it was a smaller schedule to begin with, but this will work on any any size schedule you bring into Project Summit now. We're just looking at three key areas here um, where we focused our what-if analysis. Um, I want to hone in a little bit more even. Um, if my goal is to fit this on one page, I'm going to come over here um, to where we made our logic type change. I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to click Add Time Scale Split. And we'll come out to the end of power lighting low voltage. That's kind of where we, we moved our, our, uh, our successor. And we'll add another one. Now, what this lets me do now is really just compress the timeline and different windows. So maybe over here in the beginning of the schedule, um, it's got plenty of breathing room. It's not really the focus. So I can really just stretch that down. You can do the same over on the right. And um, right here where I was making my changes, I can just zoom that in, right? And this is just gonna make sure that uh, we can fit really what we're trying to show on a single page when we go over to print. Um, I wanna, before I go print, I want to bring up a now a comparison, right? I mean, we made some changes to the schedule. We want to see how does it look compared to the baseline. So we come up to our scenario buttons. This is where we're going to see the different scenarios that we created. So this is our, the current scenario. That's the live schedule. We've got our baseline here, right? Um, and if we come into compare with, well, then we can choose, okay, well, let's compare this with our baseline, which was our target. And here it's going to overlay 
in the baseline bars or the ghosts, we call them, right underneath the main activities. And if you're if you're um, looking closely here, you'll realize that, wait a second, the baseline bars are showing criticality, right? So I can see already bit of word steel in the baseline was critical, it's showing up in red. So as I, as I trace that through with my eye, I see um, coming down into piping all of a sudden, well, piping wasn't red. So actually it jumps down to power light and low voltage. That's where the critical path was in the baseline. <clears throat> so even though I don't see logic of the baseline, you can start to infer uh, what, what the situation was until we get down into MEP and then up into install connect um, uh, process chrome. So huge. Now, just looking at this comparison, you can see what was the critical path in the baseline? What's the new critical path? We can see obviously bit of steel now is orange as near critical. Uh, so we can see the new critical path <clears throat> starts here in BOD process equipment, and it just runs all the way to the end. And you can see very clearly the, the baseline bars, the ghosts are gray. So they were not critical at all <clears throat> um, until we get to the end install uh, process equipment, which is critical in both scenarios. And we have a, a legend up here <clears throat> to show you. And we go ahead and turn on the variance as well. Uh, this will show us uh, right after uh, the, the duration of the dates. You know, we saved four days here on process equipment complete, uh, seven days over on the milestone here, power lighting low voltage. Uh, we brought it uh, earlier by 19 days, so you see a, a plus 19. So this is looking pretty good. Uh, what, do you, what do you think, Zach, about this, this comparison? I know it's different from the, the stacked uh, solution you showed us, but any thoughts um, on you know, how this is looking? Yeah, this is really exciting. It, it's been awesome to be a part of seeing some of this develop. And what we're finding is with the stack solutions, we're having to do a lot of copying and pasting and a lot of manual manipulation of the schedule. So in this case, with being able to see the bars, the baseline bars right below and the variances, it allows us to see it all on one screen. So we're not printing multiple pages. We're not trying to sift through and color code things certain ways. This is so much more automated. And what we do a lot in, in our company and in our, in our everyday workplace is try to do stuff like this. We try to show how a subcontractor may be doing week to week so we can snap a, a baseline of their progress from week to week just to show if there's any impacts there so that we can look at solutions and what they may be. Um, this will also allow us to show uh, an impact that may be coming from the client. So like we said earlier on the permitting, if we're just trying to show what that effect is from the baseline to the new scenario. This is a great opportunity for that. And what else I really like about it is it's showing us our new critical path. So while it's showing you the former, it's still showing you your current schedule and what's causing the criticality. So then we can say to our team and decide, okay, do we want to, you know, move forward with this scenario or do we now want to look at the process equ equipment swim lane and see if there's any opportunities there. And that would be our next, uh, you know, workshop is, you know, can we do any overlap there? Is there anything we can do to pull up that procurement to even better that milestone further? So really excited about how this looks right now. Yeah, and <clears throat> you can come create as many scenarios as you want. Um, and, and you can compare uh, at a given time up to three. So if you wanna do more, uh, more, you know, what ifs as separate scenarios. And when you're ready to move forward, you can take that scenario and merge it back into the live schedule. So for the rest of the demo here, I want to show you, you know, I like this layout. So I'm going to go ahead and save this as a layout. Uh, this one, um, let's call it the WBS fragments here, since we've got, you know, three different swim lanes shown out of the, the full WBS. <clears throat> um, and now we'll go over to print. So we'll come back to the home screen. Uh, we see that database view. There's a print button here. Go ahead and click print. I've got Adobe PDF set up as my printer. <clears throat> You'll see there's a, a dedicated print preview here, and we can really start to set up on um, how many pages we want this to go out. Uh, I'll go ahead and increase it up to tabloid, and boom, uh, we can see already it's on the one page. Uh, we've got that those time scale splits there, which is focusing us in on the, the main area of the schedule. <clears throat> and um, it looks like our source file had a little bit of buffer down here still. Uh, but we don't need to print. We can, you know, just like the first page to print out if we wanted. Um, I already have a PDF ready here since my, my Adobe driver goes a little bit slow here. So here's the, the PDF that as it gets sent out. Um, and this is really nice. We could, you know, use some um, of Adobe's built-in features here. We can come highlight maybe that logic tie that we changed. It's right here. 
uh, come out of comment, say changed from FS to SS, let's say, um, you know, brought back power, uh, lighting, low voltage, <clears throat> kind of the, you know, the type of notes you saw, uh, we, you know, using right on our schedule uh, yesterday. <clears throat> we could put this here and then sort of go share it out with different stakeholders or project team members that maybe weren't part of the session or that were part of the session and are just looking to, to you know, uh, for a good, um, a good takeaway. Um, <clears throat> I'm showing you this in PDF today, uh, but it's worth mentioning, we're working on a reader version uh, for this tool so that you'll be able to really send the, the schedule to anyone um, where they can open up a read-only copy um, and then very likely be able to, to see, you know, commenting and notes, you know, right in the schedule without even having to go to PDF. But this is a really good, you know, solution in the meantime. So let's go back to the schedule. And uh, my voice is about to give out, so I'm glad toward the end of the presentation. So the last part I want to show you is just to roll back up to that summary level. Um, you know, in this case, uh, it looks like I, I switched schedules, so um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my, my filter here. We're going to you know, clean up these timescale splits here, go back to sort of what was our original layout. Um, and here we're going to roll back up to level zero. You're already at level one, we can start to see what it's going to look like at a summary level. And we'll go all the way up to level zero. Let's bring that whole timeline back into view and stretch it out a little bit. Now, this is incredibly unique. We can see, uh, again, criticality on the baseline bars of the ghosts. Now, in this case, it's not showing partial, like was a, de a detailed level. So far, we're just showing you sort of the all or nothing, um, but this is a good start uh, to get you to what you're looking to see. So when we look at design, we can see in the baseline here, the red bar, it was critical. If we come down to superstructure, uh, trace it kind of down with the logic down to MEP, we see MEP was critical. We see MEP uh, came back by seven days, right? I've got the variances turned on, and then we come to trace this, this tie back up into process equipment until we see that. And so this, again, it clearly shows us what was the critical path uh, in the baseline. What's the new critical path? New critical path starts off the design, goes right up to process equipment uh, to the end of the schedule. Um, and we can see, you know, this is the logic tie that we changed from finish to start to start to start, the one that connects superstructure to MVP. So we can see that's even you know, summarized as we, as we roll up the schedule. That's one of the key logic ties that uh, Project Summit identifies and brings with it. <clears throat> so what's coming up for Project Summit? You know, we've been uh, really honed in for the laser focus here. How can we build and maintain schedules at multiple levels of detail in much less time? We want to really streamline how this works for our, our customers, our end users. So um, we started off with the summarization, and now we moved on to the, the what-if analysis. Coming up next is, you know, how do you maintain that? on a monthly basis over and over for, for monthly progress reports with really the, the least amount of effort. Um, how can we build a summary now of multiple projects, which could be you know project files that are um, split up to show different areas of the project or could be multiple projects in a portfolio. Uh, how do you build a summary and then send it for a risk analysis? Uh, and then later on, we'll be looking to explore building an upfront plan for an interactive planning session, right? Right in Project Summit which is what you use for, for uh, today for NetPoint for. Uh, look aheads. Uh, how can we sort of detail and develop out some schedules uh, either on a look ahead or a, or a fully, full detailed schedule uh, from the upfront plan? Uh, Real-time collaboration, uh, giving sort of multiple people access to the schedule at the same time. Uh, turnaround planning is, a, is another key area we've, we've heard from our customers and uh, building a summary for a you know, really for a, a claims or delay analysis with that purpose in mind. So um, I'd like to turn this over to the, the audience. Um, you know, what, what would you all out there like to see tackled the most using this new Project Summit platform? So you should see a poll come up uh, if it hasn't already soon. Um, we'll give you 10, 20 seconds. It's multiple choice, so you can choose as many as you want. Um, if you, you know, find more than one of these options um, appealing, 
Um, we'd really like to see the Dresden Project Summit. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. What, uh, while, while, while the results are coming in, I'll give you some more time. I'll pick on Zach again. What do you think, Zach? What, what on this list is got your mouth watering? Uh, what are you more excited about? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, they're all great options, first of all. It's all stuff that we really need in the scheduling world. Uh, I'm most excited about C with look aheads and detailed schedule development. A lot of times we'll, we'll plan out, we'll have a great schedule, a great baseline. Uh, and then from there going forward, it's how are we going to really dive into this project to make sure that our original plan is valid? So by being able to add activities on the fly, provide those linkages, look at our logic, and then pull all that together through that detailed schedule development, as opposed to doing that in a, in a CPM software where you have to constantly F9 and show your, your logic adjusting as you add detail. It, it's really exciting to be able to do that right in, right in Summit. And then also the swim lanes and being able to do those look aheads is really important because we can then if we break our swim lanes down by trade or by, you know, MEP or site and structure, we can, we can just show those highlighted sections of the schedule that have been developed and distribute those out. So I'm really excited about that portion of it. Awesome. I think uh, a lot of people in the audience uh, share that with you. Um, team, marketing team, can we go ahead and end the poll and we can share the results? Um, somebody confirmed you, you guys see the results up there. I don't see them on my end, but you know, you guys can let me know. All right. So yeah. it looks like, it looks like a lot of people agree with you, Zach, uh, 66%, <laughs> um, the winning vote, look ahead to detailed schedule development. Um, also looks like real, real time concurrent collaboration is up there. Really a lot of votes in all of these. So uh, yeah, it looks like of, each one got. A pretty good amount of votes um so that's that's really exciting the claims delay I'm, I'm interested in that one too because it allows us to you know put in those scenarios and show how we're doing versus what we said we were going to do and really identify where those delays may be coming in on the project so that's another good one too i'm looking forward to yeah i got a good amount of votes as well so hey uh, a good prioritization problem it looks like a lot of uh, a lot of um excitement for for each one of these so that's going to help us as we move forward with the development of the tool. Um, how to stay updated. Um, as I mentioned, we're going to have a pre-release coming out here by the end of the quarter. <clears throat> we'll send out a, a link. Um, it's going to come out after the conference in the, the email uh, that you'll get. Uh, I believe the team's also going to post it somewhere in, in the lounge or in an announcement that's going to pop up in the conference platform. So you'll be able to visit this link. Go ahead and sign up um, and you'll get access as soon as we we uh, make this release available to a wider audience on a, on a pre-release basis. Um, with that, um, we'll go move over to some Q&A um, and take any questions that uh, may have come in. Yeah, great presentation, Sebi and Zach. Uh, we do have some questions, so I can read those off to you so you can see which one of you would like to answer them. The first one is, in Project Summit, can you select activities from more than one swim lane and summarize them together, or is it only one swim lane at a time? Yeah, good question. Um, you can summarize uh, by hand more um, activities from more than one swim lane. So in my example, if I selected from design and then I selected from process uh, equipment and I, and I summarize those together, that summary is gonna go up a level into the common, the common ancestor, the common root. Um, and you can, you know, do that um, across as many levels as you want to try to, to build that right picture uh, that you need. And the good thing, again, is that all of that underlining detail is just saved in the layout. So if you want to go back to the original schedule, then you just switch layout. Okay, good answer. So next one is, can we import the P6 file that has 10,000 activities? Uh, yes, you can. Um, you know, in our uh, testing group, um, the largest schedule that has been imported has been upwards of 30,000. But, you know, we've had this tool out for quite a while with, with quite a few people evaluating it. And I think the 80% of the schedules imported have been 6,000 or less, right? So we've, 
we've really prioritized the performance for that use case. Uh, we know that uh, we have some opportunities to make it better for, for even larger schedules. And if that's where you know, our, our users um, want, want us to go, then it's definitely an opportunity. Okay. That kind of leads into the next question, which is how many activities can Project Summit handle? Yeah, I mean, similarly, um, it's, it's you can find the best performance, you know, five, 6,000, um, but uh, you can import up to 10, 20, 30. Um, we, we have some op op optimization opportunities that we can still make there um, to make it go much further, but um, definitely, you know, more than what you would be expected um, to see coming from the net point. Nice. Okay. Next question uh, could be our final one. We'll see if any more come in. But this is: Can Project Summit export to Excel with the new summarized network so it can live in P6 or NetPoint? Yep. Um, today, in the version I'm showing you, uh, the question is no. I said the answer is no. Um, but it's coming up in one of our next development sprints to send it out to P6. You know, the idea with that what if analysis that I did is that you could send it right out to an XCR. And just push the changes right into your 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 uh, P six project to be able to update you know where you're actually ex executing the schedule. So you don't you know you don't have to even make the changes in two places. You can get a nice clean XCR right out of Project Summit with those changes that you're looking to to do. Nice. Okay, a couple more have rolled in. Next question from Besher is: Can we add several projects in one file to create a summary for a whole portfolio? Uh, good question. Um, we're looking at that right now as well. It's actually um, coming up in this, you know, this summer from a, a prioritization standpoint. Um, and that was actually one of the options in the in the, the poll as well. So I, I saw it didn't poll the highest, but I know it's a it's a huge opportunity to to, to be able to do that. Um, and we're exploring that right now uh, in the design, you know, the design and uh, research phase. Okay. Uh, next question could be last one. Uh, how are different activity types summarized in Project Summit? Can you filter out some activity types? Sure. So, um, you know, I, I, you know, maybe a developer can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm sure task dependents uh, come in. Um, I don't believe resource dependents do. Um, I believe milestones come in. So milestones, task dependence, they're going to be summarized together as you, as if you just collapse the swim lane. If you do it by hand, then you can choose um, how they're going to be summarized. Um, and filtering as well, you can do by type. If you saw when I opened up the filter, I could choose by um, activity, milestone, benchmark, if you come from that point, um, or summary. So you can set that up in a filter. Nice. Okay, we did get another one from Isaac. <clears throat> can we track and monitor their percent cost complete and duration percent complete? Did they know? Um, but as I mentioned, um, right next in the roadmap is looking at how to you know, maintain the schedule for this monthly progress uh, reporting use case. So uh, I could see that uh, coming in um, you know, to, to that phase. Um, if you're looking to control and you know, track uh, percent cost and duration percent complete. Nice, thank you. Yeah, so that was our last question. All right, well, last but not least, I wanna thank uh, our development team. You know, what you've seen here, I had the opportunity to demo, but this is really made possible thanks to all of them. Um, I also wanna thank all of our testers in PMA, outside PMA. There's way too many of you to, to name or show as headshots here, but you continue to provide us uh, really good feedback answer our uh, annoying surveys. Uh, we're very lucky to, to count on such a large and experienced body of, of SMEs to help us uh, build the best solutions that we can for this platform going forward. So uh, here's our contact info. If you're looking to get in touch about anything about the presentation today, about, uh, about our companies. Zach, any last, uh, last words? No, thanks a lot for, for attending and Appreciate the opportunity. It's really exciting seeing Summit and how it's progressing. Thanks for joining me. It's been a pleasure. And thank you, everybody, for attending.